my name is Chanel. Welcome to my bookbinding studio. Let's talk about basic bookbinding tools and materials. I've been bookbinding for over six years, and these are the essentials that I use every day. I'm going to demonstrate how I use these tools throughout the process of making this case-bound book. Bone folders are very versatile, as you'll see me use them from beginning to end. They are used to crease folds and smooth out bubbles and wrinkles, among many other uses. I just released my own folder as a vegan alternative to the ones traditionally made of bone. They're available in my shop. This is 70 pound sketch paper that I got from Blick, I believe. I'm folding four sheets per signature. I'm going to use this Olfa knife and metal ruler to cut the paper to size. The ruler should be metal because the blade can cut into other materials like wood or plastic. The grid lines of the cutting mat help ensure that the cut is square. I made 10 signatures for the text block. This is an owl, like owl but with an A. It's used to make holes for sewing. This is a light duty awl. I don't use it much for making holes because it's not as strong, but you'll see me using it later. I'm preparing holes for the French link stitch. For sewing, I use wax linen thread and a curved needle. The wax prevents the thread from fraying. I like to use a two-ply thread for case-bound text blocks and a four-ply thread for exposed spines like the Coptic stitch. The curved needle is also known as a mattress or upholstery needle. This one is two and a half inches. You can definitely use a straight one. I prefer curved for easier handling while sewing. After the text block is sewn up, we need to press and glue the spine. I have a homemade book press, but if you don't have one, let me suggest a solution. These are ratchet hand clamps with quick release from the hardware store. You can also use a deep C clamp. I can clamp the text block between two thick pieces of chipboard or something rigid. and prop it up with two bookends. This is archival quality PVA glue. Sourcing archival quality glue is important because it will ensure the adhesive won't yellow or degrade and will last for many years. I like to use foam brushes to apply glue and they're easy to find at the craft store. There are brushes made specifically for gluing, which I'll likely get after I use up the foam ones. Here's one of the ways that I like to use that light duty awl. To clean up some overflow, and to separate the text block and chipboard. I'm adding the end papers to the text block. These end papers are 80 pounds, slightly heavier weight than the sketch pages.
time to chop the edges of the text block. I have a heavy duty guillotine, but for many years I would hand cut my edges. Here's how I do it. Using a new or sharp blade, hold your ruler firmly against the text block. Cut using medium pressure. Make sure your blade is perpendicular to the cutting mat and your shoulders are facing your work. I'm going to let this play in real time so you can see how I cut it. It's not perfect, but it turned out well, I think. This part definitely takes practice. If you're cutting your book smaller and smaller because you're messing up, it's okay, you're not alone. I've been there. Let's make the covers. This is 30 ply chipboard from Blick. It's 2.5 millimeters thick or 1 tenth of an inch. You can also look for book board or Davy board. I made this book cloth with fabric, heat and bond, and tissue paper. I'll link my book cloth tutorial in the description. I'm choosing to use cardstock instead of chipboard for a more flexible spine. I measured a space that is a quarter inch or a little more than six millimeters between the spine and the covers. If you're using chipboard for the spine, you'll need to add the thickness of the chipboard to the spacing. Take this advice with a grain of salt, because for every case binding design I've made, I needed to make at least two, as the measurements were off. When I figure it out, I'll make a video. The folder is great for smoothing at this step. This is the third cutter, making an appearance. The rotary cutter is ideal for fabric, but I learned that it can also be used on paper, especially lightweight sheets that the box cutter tends to tear. Back to the text block, I'm going to reinforce the spine using a super cloth, in this case it's cheesecloth, and Unryu tissue paper. End bands cover the space in the spine between the text block and the cover and are traditionally sewn on. I think it makes the book look professional and complete. To make glue on headbands, I use a strip of fabric and fold it over some cotton twine. Cut off the excess and glue them onto the head and tail of the text block.
We have reached the final step of casing in the book. I use the covers of art paper pads as scrap for gluing. You can use anything. And watercolor paper as a moisture barrier for pressing. Another moisture barrier option is wax paper. The book is pressed overnight. Pressing books after they're completed helps prevent paper from warping and wrinkling while the glue dries. It's also a chance for all your materials to snuggle together. You can also weigh down your book with heavy objects. Pulling books out of the press the next morning is one of the best feelings. Here's how it turned out. Everything I shared in this video is the result of lots of online research and figuring things out in my studio. If you have other tool recommendations or tips and tricks for fellow bookbinders, please share your thoughts. I hope this was helpful for your bookbinding journey. Let's review all the tools and materials I used in this video.